Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we are in P5JS looking at my Wavy Line Art Maker, which you can play with in your browser. There's a link to the code in the video description. I will be going over all the different variables that you can change in order to get these different types of wavy lines. And then later on in the video, I'll go over the code so you can see how this was accomplished. Now, as with any generative art maker, you're not going to get wonderful art every time you run the program. The creation of art is really a collaboration between the user and the computer program. The computer is just spitting out stuff and it's up to the user to curate what they see and say, oh, this is art, and then to save the things that they think are art. Uh, I can hit S to save a JPEG and then I can use that JPEG later. Every time I click on the screen, I'm getting a new piece of art. This will also work on your phone. You can just tap to get new art. So, different variables. We've got a range here. If I put this to a negative 10, then I'm gonna get a lot more overlap. This first figure is determining if there's overlap. So if there's negative 10 here, then you're gonna get overlap. Whereas if you had a positive 10, then the lines are not going to overlap. There'll be at least 10 pixels space between each line. And then the 40 is the maximum amount of space between each line. So if I made this 90, you would see much thicker lines. And if I made this only, say, 80, then you're going to see more uniform where all the lines are between 80 and 90. So let's put that back to, say, 10 and 50. Now the layers, this from here down to here is one layer, and this right here is a second layer. And this is saying how many layers there are. There's actually three layers here, but one of them got completely covered up, apparently. Let's try increasing the layers some more. There are ten layers, and there's at least, you can see one here, another here, another here, another kind of this way, and one this way. But I could have just one layer, and it would look like this, and if I made these more uniform, you would just see this. So this variable is about the rotation of each time it draws a stripe. Right now there's no rotation each time it draws a stripe in one layer. But if I change this to 10, now I'm gonna get some rotation. Let's click again and again. So you're getting a spiraling effect. If I do a 90 degree angle, I get sort of a square looking thing. And 45 can sometimes be interesting. So let's put that back to zero. Here I've got lines equals true. That means the outline. So I can say false, and then there won't be an outline. So we'll click a few times to see what that looks like. We've got the alpha set at 255, which is the max right now, but I can set that to say 105. And now we have see-through. I'll click a few more times. I forgot to mention, these colors are coming from a color table. They're randomly picking from a color table. The table has 676 palettes that have five colors in each palette. This is the color table. It's a CSV file. You see RGB uh, one through five. This is the label row, and then these are all the rows of colors, the R, G, and B of each color. I've got this color random variable set to false. But if I set this to true, then instead of picking from the color table, it just picks random colors for each line, which I don't like nearly as much. So we'll set that back to false. Then uh, filling equals true. When it draws, it's drawing this strip, and so this is saying whether it's filled in or not. So I can say false, and we're not seeing anything because I already said false to the lines, but I could say true to the lines and now we just see the lines. But I've also got this, which is color lines. If I say true to color lines, now it uses the colors to do the lines, which is kind of hard to see with the 105 alpha. So we'll put that back to 255 for now, and you can see the lines. I also have a variable here for the stroke width, so we could increase that a bunch to say 30, and now we get something like this. Let's make it even more. Now that we can see the lines better, maybe put the alpha back down a little bit. And so we get something like this. So the extra black has to do with when it's pulling from the color table, it's looking for five colors, 
but if I put one here, then it's gonna look for six colors, except there's only five colors in the color table. And so instead, it's going to substitute uh, a white fill and a black outline. So that's what I'm getting here, except that I already told it not to fill. So all we're seeing is the outline. But that makes for some sort of interesting art. But you see, these lines have alpha, while this line does not have any alpha. I've got a separate variable for the black alpha, so we'll put that to 105, and now all of the colors have the same alpha. And if I put that back, and then let's do the filling true again, and let's reduce this a little bit, increase this. So now you can see the white fill next to the black outline. So that makes things kind of interesting. Now if I put this extra black to negative, let's say negative two, then it pulls fewer colors from the color table. And so instead of getting five colors from that particular color palette, I'm only getting three. So that can make for some interesting art. This is kind of interesting. I did negative 40 and positive 50 and I'm getting this. Now you can't have negative 60, positive 50 because it's filling from the top going down. And if you do negative 60, then it's gonna to try to go upwards instead of downwards. So I've got it set so that it just won't draw anything if you do negative 60 and positive 50. If you want straight lines like this, this is negative one, positive two, and no lines. This is actually just filling. If you do lines, it actually takes more processing power for some reason. So I think that's all the variables that I wanted to show you. So before I talk about the code, if you've liked this video or if you've liked what I've done here, please give this video a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Next, let's talk about how this is accomplished. So I am not gonna go line by line through all of the code. I don't think that's necessary but I'll hit some fundamentals of what makes this different from other things I've done. So this is a smaller and simplified version of what I've done. And this shape right here in purple is a curved vertex shape. So it starts at this point and goes to here, and then here, 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 etc. It drew this shape first, and then it went down a little bit and drew this shape, and this shape, and then this shape. So between each point, we're adding a random amount of pixels, and the beginning and ending of that random selection is determined by these two numbers. So this dot is moving down between 10 and 40 pixels each time. So then I'm taking this drawing and expanding the boundaries out past the edge of the canvas. Top, bottom, left, right, so all you see is this part right here. And in this example, I've said that this is the ending line for y. Right here I've got y minus 200, but if I put y plus 500, then it's gonna draw further down to the bottom. Although for this example, this isn't quite working. I'd have to change a few more variables. So let's go over to the actual wavy line maker code. Uh, so after the starting variables here, I've got function preload the table then this is determining the amount of display space available to us so that if you have a large display, it'll display a much larger canvas. And then instead of just create canvas, I've got let can so that I can do can mouse pressed. And that way, every time I press on the canvas with my mouse, it starts set up again. Here I'm doing angle mode of degrees, and this is because I'm going to do translate and I'm gonna be rotating the canvas. Every time I do a new layer, I rotate the canvas from the center of the canvas. This variable is saying where the lines are gonna stop below the canvas. This is picking which palette will be used from the color palette table for this piece of art. This is the for loop for each layer. If we're on the first layer, we're going to have that layer starting way above the canvas. And if it's not the first layer, then the second layer is gonna start kind of at the top half of the canvas. And by the time you get to the last layer, that's starting way at the bottom of the canvas. So after we assign all the starting Y points, then we set the rotation of this particular layer random 360 degrees. And then the stripe 
also has rotation and that's going to be incrementing. And so I'm using this rot this stripe to increment that and starting that at zero. And then farther down in the code, I'm incrementing that with the stripe rotation that you assigned in the variables at the top. I have a while loop that is checking to see that all of the Y's have reached the bottom. So it will continue drawing until all the Y's have reached the bottom. But I've also got this here to check to make sure that this number is not negative 60 while this is positive 50. Because if the user did this and I wasn't checking this, we would wind up in a forever loop. So if we haven't reached the bottom yet, then we start moving the Y positions down by a random number between the starting and ending range. After that, we're checking if color random is true, then we pick a random R, G, and B. If it's not true, then we're gonna pick from the color table. So if extra black was set to zero, we would be picking from the five colors in that particular color palette. So once we've determined which of the five colors out of that particular color palette we're gonna get, then we're gonna look at the table we're gonna to go to the row for that palette that we selected earlier, and we're gonna look at the color number times three. That's because there's an R, G, and B, and it's kind of complicated to explain. I do have another video that talks about color for artists in P5JS, and I'd suggest you go look at that or just study the code. Then we push because we wanna to translate to the middle of the canvas. If you have rotation of the lines, we're starting out at zero rotation and then we keep incrementing for each line we draw. And then there's a rotation of the layer, which is just random 360 degrees. So then when we rotate, we're adding those two rotations, the stripe rotation and the layer rotation. So then we finally draw the curve vertex that I talked about before, and we end the shape, close it, and pop the pop resets the rotation to the starting horizon. Other than that, there's some if statements in here like this one where if lines equals true, let's do stroke, and if it's not true, then we'll do no stroke. Stuff like that that I don't think we need to go over. So that's everything. It's about 100 lines of code. It's pretty simple. Now I could, I know, make some sliders and radial buttons to have a user interface to make this easier to play with but that's a lot of extra work and I didn't want to do it. But if you want to do it, you are welcome to give it a shot. Just make sure you give me credit and link to my original code and my video. I do notice that I seem to be consistently getting a hump in the middle of the line, and I can't figure out why that is. I've looked at the code over and over again, and I don't see why that should be occurring. Obviously, I want some waviness to this, but it shouldn't all be happening right in the center. So if you notice something in the code that explains this and can fix it, uh, let me know. So that's going to do it for this video. If you haven't seen my other P5JS generative art videos and code, you might want to check out those. Feel free to leave me any comments, especially if you think I could do something different with this. If you liked the video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, or ring the bell for the notifications. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.